In the skies above Battleworld, Thorleaf and his new partner Thor the Unworthy races towards Doomguard, the HQ of the Thor Corps. The Unworthy knew that it had to be a Thor who killed Jane Foster and Donald Blake, but he didn't know which one. Thorleaf was instrumental in drawing out the Betrayer. It is revealed that Rune Thor and his partner Thor Destroyer are the culprits. Rune betrayed the Code of the Hammer, and he must be brought in to face his crimes. Doomguard, the Thunder Room, Rooney got Loki by the throat and is prepared to execute the homeless man making it look like a suicide. Thor Destroyer guards the Thunder Room just in case their brothers and sisters come peeking around. The sound of thunder is all too familiar to Rooney's ears. It can't be him. Thorleaf is dead. The second strike removes Thor Destroyer from Doomguard and the attacker presents himself. Thorleaf informs his fellow court member that he is under arrest for the murder of Jane Foster, Donald Blake, and his partner, Beta Ray Thor. But Rooney will not go down easily. He preemptively strikes our heroes, but the lightning is returned. Thor Destroyer returns and he takes out the mighty Thor. Rooney charges at Thorleaf and manages to take the upper hand. They engage with all of their might. Their bones rattle and blood is spilled. They charge through a brick wall ending up on the other side where our hero Jane Foster, the goddess of thunder from Earth 616, is in the middle of rallying the Thor core. Doom is not the All-Father, she states. You are the sons and daughters of Asgard and you have been made to fight a lie. Words of blasphemy echoes the halls of doom, but the thunder goddess isn't finished yet. Are these the children of doom I see before me? Or are you truly worthy to carry those hammers? With his hammer in hand, the ultimate Thor shatters the silence. My name is Thor, and I am worthy. His courageous lead inspires those around him. My name is Thor, and I am worthy. My name is Thor. I am worthy. My name is Thor. I am worthy. I am Thor. Rune Thor shows his displeasure and slams the ground with his hammer. But it's over. Thor Destroyer is nowhere to be seen, and the Thor Corps will follow the ultimate Thor. Rune is backed up against the wall, and his worthiness fades. His hammer gains in weight, and it is now too heavy to be lifted. It falls to the ground, signaling that Rune is now unworthy. Without his weapon, the Rune Thor gets taken out by one clean swing to the face. Civil War breaks out as members of the Thor Corps are split. Many chose God Doom as their Allfather, but the Law Speaker can finally see that Thorleaf speaks the truth. He sides with Thorleaf, shifting the battle against Doom's Thor Corps. The battle is won, but the war is still raging on. The Goddess of Thunder leads the charge towards the World Tree, so that they might smite a god. While en route, Thorleaf catches up to the Thunder Goddess. He had never seen her before, but he recognizes those eyes. Jane Foster. She tells him that she is new to all this, but Thorleaf isn't. He took part in many apocalyptic battles, and this may be their ultimate fight. They have arrived at the epicenter of destruction. They prove their worthiness, and they attack the biggest and baddest monster that they can find. Thorleaf goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Holocaust, the son of Baron Apocalypse. He takes out the monster, but many more takes his place. For the first time in his life, he feels truly worthy. Nothing matters now but the thunder ringing in his ears, the feel of Mjolnir in his hand, the taste of battle upon his lips. The monster washes over him like a rushing tsunami, but he will not stop. He won't stop. Even if his life is taken, he will hurl his hammer as hard as possible. So hard that it will still be flying. Long after he's... The ultimate Thor's hammer found a new home in Asgard. What's going on guys? Welcome to Comic Island. My name is Joey and today we are reviewing and recapping Thor's issue 4. So we are finally here at this awesome ride. <laughs> yep, that's right guys. I really enjoyed this tie-in. Even though there are a few things that made me go WTF, I think I'm just going to focus on the great things about this issue. So let's go over them. I loved how this issue went from a murder mystery to a tale of revenge. I'm new to this Thorleaf character from the Ultimate Universe, and writer Jason Aaron did a great job making me care and bond with him. So it's just awesome watching Thorleaf kick ass, and it was especially cool when we see the mighty Thor team up with Thorleaf. 
There's also a sense of heightened testosterone in these four issues. There's barely any female leads except for Jane Foster, of course. She shows up at the end. I was hoping that she would show up a bit sooner. The story is moving so fast that I feel like it skipped over her story. For instance, what happened to her after Doctor Strange blasted the heroes and villains to random parts of Battleworld? As far as I know, she disappears at the end of Secret Wars issue 4 and reappears in this issue. But that's just something small that I had to point out. I also gotta give a ton of love to writer Jason Aaron for leading this tie-in. I first read his work back in Thor God of Thunder, and now he brings us this awesome tie-in. He is now hands down my favorite Thor writer. Thank you Jason for bringing us this much awesomeness. Okay, so now let's get into a few things that are left unanswered by this issue. We are led to believe that Thorleaf dies. Damn, I hope he lives. But obviously, Battle World is over and a new world is formed where almost every hero and villain goes back to the status quo. But here's the interesting thing. We got Miles Morales in the main world, which currently has no name. That means we got two Spider-Men. We also got Reed Richards from the Ultimate Universe coming over as well. So I hope that Thorleaf isn't dead and that he jumps over to James Foster's Mighty Thor series as a side character. So near the end, the Mikey Thor, or as you may know him, the Odinson from the 616 walks by Rooney's unconscious body and his Mjolnir. He looks at the hammer and decides to not pick it up. I was geeking over this part. This isn't the Thor from the 616 because he died at the end of Time Runs Out. But it's such a nice nod to the 616 Thor and how he lost his worthiness. Oh, by the way, Marvel. What the hell, man? We need to know. How did Thor lose his worthiness? What did Fury say? <laughs> Okay guys, so the last thing I want to talk about was the final few pages. It took me a few seconds to figure out what happened here. Take a look at this image. This is Battleworld. No stars are around because as the promo says, there is only Battleworld. But then an explosion happens and the world looks like the regular planet Earth. Thorley's hammer goes hurling towards an abandoned Asgard which I'm assuming is from the 616. So his hammer blasted a hole and crossed into another dimension? Is this dimension basically the 616? If so, does this mean that the Ultimate Universe is gone and only the 616 remains? So yeah, just to wrap this up, I thoroughly enjoyed this tie-in. It does continue in Arden's Secret Wars issue 7 coverage, so I recommend checking that out. But now, I want to hear from you. How did you enjoy this issue? Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching my review of Thor's issue 4. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time in another Comic Island video.